That's all right. My pleasure. Okay. How are you going? Hey. All good. All good. All good. Well, uh, uh, welcome and thank you. Um, another month, another fantastic, very busy month, which has been uh, which has been great. Start off with uh, apologies. Um, I had uh, a, a contact by Sid Kidman today, who uh, can't make it, and um, I was talking to a, uh, a lovely young guy by the name of Jordan James, who uh, came along on our last uh, day drive to uh, Glen Gallon. Um, he's only recently moved to Brisbane from Canberra, and uh, I got quite excited when he told me that in, in Canberra he was the uh, magazine editor and photographer down there. Oh, <laughs> so uh, I have been taking him out to lunch and uh, <laughs> trying to convince him what a, what a great club we have and how badly we need a magazine editor who knows how to spell to start off with. <laughs> I, re I realise as I'm doing it, I'm good at pictures, but I'm no good at words. But uh, anyway, uh, he, uh, I spoke to him today and he said he'd love to come along, but he's got a, a work thing on tonight. So, um, uh, are there any other apologies from the floor? Okay, thank John you. O'Reilly. John O'Reilly. Turn an apology. <laughs> you go through life with, uh, with friends like that. Okay, um, moving on, uh, the minutes for the last meeting were, uh, were circulated. Um, uh, does anyone uh, have anything to discuss about uh, from the minutes from the last meeting? The insurance situation. The insurance situation. Um, we will discuss that uh, in the uh, the drive report. It's on the agenda for a little bit later, if that's okay. Um, okay. Um, uh, can we have a seconder for that for the minutes, John? Um, the just uh, staying on. Sorry, uh, from the minutes. There was some concern last month uh, that uh, Dan Honky raised about drive reports, discussion, and comments about uh, the, uh, the past drives. Um, we have discussed that uh, personally, and I think uh, that that's okay, and uh, uh, I'd like to uh, just move on and see how we go with uh, the new drive rules. We've tried them a couple of times, and they seem to be working out pretty well. Um, also, from the last minutes, uh, I just want to confirm that Larry Crouch is now the 6 Series Register Coordinator and Dennis is the um, uh, Interclub um, Coordinator as well. So let's just and swap, swap those roles. And the motorsport. Yes, and the motorsport. Yes. So, uh, okay. Uh, John Fairman, would you mind giving us a, a brief Rundown uh, and the winners of the uh, Motorfest. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come on, yes. you can tell us. I will give you a brief rundown. Will I give you the winners? No, I won't. <laughs> uh, the winners won't be announced until the um, presentation night this year. Right. So if you think you may have won a, something at Motorfest, ask me. I'll give you some indication if you have or if you have not. Um, but yeah, we'd like to see all of you at uh, the dinner. So that's where all the winners will be announced this year. Um, Motorfest went pretty smoothly, thanks to everybody that helped. Um, Ian Solomon for his data input, and um, who else did we have? Dan Honky uh, also helped. Um, the judges, Warwick, I wasn't aware, but yeah, yeah Warwick. Um, everybody, it all yeah. pulled together quite well, and I think the day went off pretty good, you must agree. Um, there were some nice cars there and some unusual cars. We had the little eye setter, who I can tell you actually was people's choice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, um, surprise, surprise. Surprise, yeah. surprise, yeah. yeah. Really nice gentleman. He let people into his car and uh, they did group photos and what have you with kids. It was, uh, yeah. was a great event. Um, we picked up a few new members on the day, I think about three or four in, in total. Um, but yeah, it all went off pretty smooth, so hopefully uh, here's the next year's been as good. Thank you. And see you all at the dinner. And again, thank you very much for everyone who uh, uh, 
went out of their way to uh, both support and uh, and set up the event. It was it was great. And, uh, Ian Solomon's military precision with um, his uh, diagrams, layouts, and measuring cars and making them all fit. It's, uh, it's fantastic. Thanks again. Can I just add one quick thing to that? There's still a couple of trophies that we're chasing. So if anybody has got a trophy that they haven't returned, please get in touch with me so or with Gary so we can organise to get them back. There's a couple still there I've got to chase. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, just some business arising in the last month. Uh, just so you're all aware, we have received some resignations to the club. Um, a club member, um, uh, Dave Ross, and um, two resignations from the committee, Beck Carter and Jordan Carter. Uh, also, sadly, uh, Jordan Carter's uh, withdrawn the uh, sponsorship uh, for motorsport that he had uh, sort of in place. But um, we were, were trying to work through that. But the um, uh, situation has arisen, and uh, those guys have decided to uh, withdraw their support from, the, from uh, the committee. They are still club members, but uh, I don't know what their activity is going to be. But anyway, um, we've uh, got the uh, barbecue and gas bottle and stuff back from um, B Tuned. It was up there. We've lost the uh, big club banner somewhere along the way. Um, that's gone astray. Yeah. Just on those uh, resignations, I've got uh, Dave made a request that his letter be tabled and entered into the minutes, if that's okay? Sure, absolutely. Yep. Uh, if, um, if you don't know that, but, uh, thank you. Um, there has also uh, arisen during the last month a uh, breach of code of conduct that um, the committee is investigating. Uh, it was something that happened on Facebook. And I'm not going to go into the details. Uh, it's now um, just moved on to a committee investigation with a club member. A, uh, as I said, a, a code of conduct, a sh sorry, show cause has been issued. And um, we shall go through the procedure of, of uh, investigating a breach of code of conduct and uh, that matter will be dealt with uh, in private uh, by the committee. Uh, social report. Leanne, step up and win. Okay. Uh, first up is um, John T. will elaborate on the Glen Gowan one, but the breakfast in the meeting went really well, but we'll elaborate on that in his uh, dry report. Uh, the next event coming along is the Social Sunday on the 25th of August at the German Club. So that's all up on uh, Facebook and you would have got the uh, email res uh, you know, notifications and that. So uh, if you're going to register, go online and register so we get the numbers and that please. Because um, we're just going to let the people know how many people are actually attending um, on that night or on that day. And then of course the next one will be the annual celebrations and awards night. That's the 14th of September. That's at the Eagle's Nest at the Point Hotel. Uh, we're getting that all put together with you know, menus and catering and all the rest. So if anyone wants to uh, put their hand up to help you know, add on to the fun, uh, by all means, come and see me. Uh, we've got some things uh, in the pipeline, but uh, many hands always help. So appreciate it if someone would like to uh, come in with that too. Um, that's about it for social report at the moment. Okay, just to add to the, uh, the gala night, um, in talking to uh, Simon Pierce Harrix at RX Automotive, uh, I must admit my ignorance, I don't know them that well, and uh, when I was talking to Simon, uh, I got to know the depth of his experience and knowledge, both in car club and motor racing, um, and uh, he made comment that last uh, gala dinner, he was not terribly uh, enthusiastic about coming again, he said, you know, just sat in the corner and didn't talk to many people or do much. So I thought, why don't uh, we uh, ask, and I have asked Simon Harrocks to uh, be a guest speaker at our dinner this time and talk about, you know, history in motorsport and motor racing and cars and interesting things. And he is, uh, he's accepted, and I think uh, Richard Gresham might help him out. He was going to talk to Richard Gresham and, uh, you know, just. Uh, have some um, you know, to introduce some of the new members of the club 
you know, the depth of history and um, the commitment of uh, some of the members who have been around for a long time. So I'm um, just uh, hoping to make a, uh, an, an interesting night out of it, have someone uh, there that uh, would uh, give us some, uh, some background. Um, John Fairman, membership. We're just overrun with new members, aren't we? We are overrun with new members, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many new members do we have this month? I can't tell you tonight because I haven't looked at it. But yeah. I printed off a hell of a lot of membership cards. So if you're waiting for your membership cards to come out, there's probably about 35 new ones, new membership, uh, replacement membership cards, and I think something like 22 new member cards coming out. So they will be coming out to you very shortly. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right. Um, resignations, uh, social support. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, John Tate, please, drive report. Okay, um, there was only one run in July, and that was the breakfast slash brunch run to Glen Gallon. Uh, we called it a brekkie run, so brekkie for some, brunch for me. Um, it went from uh, the Puma uh, centre at uh, Dinmore. We had 26 cars registered, four no shows, and on the day we had 18 member cars and two non member cars uh, uh, depart, and uh, two joined uh, at Glen Gallon, so two from the Darling Down. Um, we broke the uh, cars up into two groups and uh, they headed off at seven o'clock as planned. The whole run took uh, just over two hours with a comfort stop at Lake Apex at Gatton. So we went around the back roads, stayed off the highway, <coughs> Bloom, Laidley, uh, or back of Laidley, Blenheim, and then to Gatton, and then from Gatton up through Heifer Creek, or Mama Creek, Heifer Creek, etc., cetera, to uh, uh, Glen Gallon. Again, we use the new run guidelines and those procedures that we set down uh, to trial and all the feedback on it was positive. No cars got this uh, uh, or, or lost. Uh, everyone stayed uh, together uh, as such. Everyone seemed to have a great time. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone got any questions about it? Great. Um, moving on from that. Um, we have uh, been discussing what to do with all the non-members and non-member cars that come along to events, uh, basically getting freebies on an industrial scale, some of them. So we, are, we have introduced a $20 per car uh, fee for drive events for non-members. So that's non-members uh, of the club completely. Uh, they're still going to be limited to two, and it's going to be policed, two events. Um, now that $20, I've been discussing it with John, we've just got to come to a, uh, an arrangement and talk, to it, uh, talk, to, talk about it with the committee as to what we do with that uh, $20. Uh, ultimately, the idea will be to credit it towards our membership if they join within a given period, perhaps say a month, um, it's not going to go on forever as a credit. So the idea is to get them under the umbrella if they're interested, otherwise they can keep paying $20 but they're only going to get two shots at it anyway. Now that's per car for non-members. There is another issue that has come up with uh, regards to CAMS insurance. Last meeting, uh, I gave the news that I received from CAMS about accident and injury insurance. And I was told by, the, by Gallagher's then that it was only applicable to CAMS license holders. Well, they changed the rules again or they've uh, clarified that situation. It's only for CAMS license holders and it's only at competitive events. 
it narrows it down, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. so yeah. it isn't happening on club drives because they are not a competitive event. However, all members, all, all members of uh, the club uh, on, a, on a drive event are covered by the product and uh, public liability insurance from CAMS. Which brings us to the next point. There are a lot of people who are on single memberships as opposed to a bundle membership who regularly come along with their wife <laughs> or partner or whatever. Uh, that wife, partner, whatever is not covered by that liability insurance. All right, because they are not members. So the fix is easy. If you think you fit into that category, i.e. you have a single membership, not a bundle membership, if you've got a single one, it's probably costing you $75 a year. A bundle is an extra 10 bucks. That's for the other party. You can add someone to it, to your membership, <coughs> take up a bundle, and then next time around, you're going to pay an extra $10 a year for two, you know, to renew your membership. But that way, the partner uh, is covered. Does everyone understand that? So we can. Uh, so if there's any questions, just go to John to say, "Oh, listen, what's, what's this about changing <laughs> the bundle membership?" It's pretty straightforward. If you have a look at the join up uh, page, or if you have a look at your own details, you'll see it there. And uh, if you've got any questions, either John or myself, uh, it's pretty easy. So you can add yourself to the bundle, but you won't pay that extra ten dollars until your next membership. So but that way, you get people covered. Does yeah. everyone sort of understand that? Any I have a question. These people who have been turning up for these rides and not members, have they been covered at all? Or they no, not no, not they've, they've, they've been no. made aware of it? No. Well, not properly. I mean, unfortunately, the website still needs amendment. However, what I've done with all the um, non-member uh, the non sign-up section for an event, if they go to sign up now, it, uh, and you can go and have a look at it, go and have a look at any of the events that are up on there, uh, uh, drive events, you will see that it states quite clearly that they get uh, two shots, uh, that they are not covered for CAM uh, PPL insurance, and uh, if it's a drive event, they will be charged $20 per vehicle. So if they press the button and go ahead from there, we'll automatically generate a $20 invoice for them. Does that allow them to be covered by the insurance? No, nope, not at all. Nope. Okay. All that allows is someone the privilege to come along <coughs> and uh, enjoy uh, the drive and the, what's been organised for the members, uh, whereas they've been doing it for nothing, and some have been doing it for years for nothing. So uh, I don't expect we're going to get too many takers. They'll either join or <coughs> they might do it once. Uh, just to see. But if they want to come along to things like this, it's exactly the same blurb, except it doesn't hit them up for 20 bucks. So if you have a look at tonight, registering for tonight, you would have seen exactly the same blurb for non members. They can come along, they're not covered by uh, PPL, uh, and they get two goes. So if they haven't made their mind up by then, uh, after the two shots, then they'll just be here on the fleet. <coughs> Unless they've got some extenuating circumstances. Always listen to reason. Um, <laughs> drives a good tip. Yeah. So, um, I think that covers, covers all those things on the agenda. With regard to that, we need what? to get the membership database synchronised to the website so it knows who are members. Yeah. Because I signed up for tonight and said you aren't a member, and I thought, well, that's it. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> it says you weren't a member. Did you, you take the hint? Well, can you? Can you right? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, whoops. I, I missed the flight. So, so the website doesn't correctly identify who are mem who are members. So you did, should say, you did say that you you are not a member. Is that what you it said? said? I wasn't, but I am. So right. Did okay. you log in? Are you? Yes, I logged in. Are you a life member? No. Membership up to that. How about for you, Andrew? I'll take a look.
there's, there's a disconnect in there somewhere. Yeah, okay, well, thank you. So, uh, now now we know we can chase it because there, there's lots of those little things that we're coming, we're stumbling across those sorts of things. Yeah. You know, yeah. we've got to. You find out what's yeah. getting cool. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think that's all. That was all I had. Yep. Yep. There's the uh, uh, the Mike Walsh lunch. Oh, sorry. Run. Yes. But uh, uh, are you going to talk about that? Yeah. Or? Sorry, that's another drive thing too. Yeah. There's uh, the Mike Walsh uh, lunch cruise is set for the 8th of September, and it starts from the Gap um, Shopping Centre. Uh, arrive at. 8.30, 9 o'clock for a 9.30 sharp departure. It's going over the hills, far away through Somerset, Kilcoy to Woodford Pub for lunch. Uh, so more details as they come to hand. Right. Led by the 6 Series. The the it, will will be be led, event. it will be led by the 6 Series. Yep. We would like to encourage a big participation in this run, even though it's led by the six series. It is a whole of club run, um, and yeah, we would like to see a big turnout um, for this event. So yeah, bring your wife, bring your friend, bring your dog. We don't care who you bring, but yeah, be there. So while you're talking, register report. Register report. The registers are being a little proactive at the moment, which is good to see. Um, the sixth register had its first uh, coffee night. At, um, yeah, it wasn't worried. Cafe 63, Cafe 63 in Hamilton. Yeah. Um, and they're currently doing uh, well, they're a newsletter to the six registers. Um, Adam Smith, Smith is July and August. Adam Smith is here somewhere tonight. Right, can't see him at the moment. Yeah. Um, he's, and he's, uh, he's stealing stuff out of the fridge at the moment. Get out of the fridge, Adam. <laughs> 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 Take it anyway. And uh, he's starting to be more proactive. Um, we also would like to see some more involvement from the uh, E36 register group. Uh, yeah, we're going to pick quite at the moment. Yeah. That's have you got anything you want to put into that, Larry? Yeah. No, there's nothing more needs no. to go into that. No. We've okay. everything. We've got social nights, we've got a couple of runs organised, the coffee nights for a regular monthly event, the next one, one in Central, one South and one North. The next one's in uh, Coffee Club, Cinderella Drive, Spring Week, and the following one will be at Aspen. So it gives people from various sides of town an opportunity to be able to get to the place without having to cross town traffic. Adam, have you got any Adam, Adam, have you got any input you want to put into the registers? Sorry, buddy? Do you have any input you'd like to put into the registers? Classics? The classics? Uh, to talk about? Yes. Yeah. you got any um, organised coming up? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just trying to organise now with the committee as far as when we can try to get a date set in uh, for the end of the year to have probably a run and a luncheon or a breakfast breakfast uh, run and, and a, a longer run. Okay, bud. As well, definitely want to get two in before the end of the year. Right. If we can, otherwise, definitely one. Yeah, watch this place. Watch this place. One this year, yeah. one next year, and we'll be happy. Nah. <laughs> just, um, Every month. Everyone, just uh, on, a, on the odd occasion, make sure you just check the various Facebook pages uh, as well. Because, um, you know, everyone's trying to uh, put uh, stuff up specific to their registers. We don't want to make it a register club no exactly. but um you know there is there is a lot of activity so uh, you know keep your eye on, on all of those sorts of things is it true that registers only have to organize two events a year that's all they need to that is that, and that should fill the calendar admirably yeah, correct <laughs> okay we're waiting to hear from the m register actually yes okay as well just <laughs> on the registers <laughs> something else Pete had mentioned to me the other day that he would be quite interested to take over the lead for the minister. He did make the comment though that I said to him that all that's basically required, he knows what's required mainly, and I said that we're asking about organising two events now, and he said, well, that's probably where he'd have a bit of trouble, but I'm sure there's plenty of us that will help out in the Sorry, who was that? Oh, Piers did, yes, um, he mentioned that to me at the yeah, moment as well. Um, I mean, one of them would always probably be a tech day. <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely. One of their venues. Yeah. Which one? Yeah. Which uh, leads me straight into the advertising and sponsorship. Uh, <clears throat> as I said, um, sadly we, uh, we've lost Beachy and as a sponsor, 
But um, uh, with the little newsletter I've been doing, uh, we've actually got our first uh, paid advertiser, Simon and Piers Harricks, or Piers Harricks rather, um, from RX Automotive has taken up a, an annual um, advertising uh, contract with us. So um, please have a look at the newsletter, have a look at his uh, information, and we're out there to support people who support us. So if you can support them, please do. Also, if anyone else knows anyone who might be interested in advertising in our little newsletter, love to know because um, you know, I keep uh, people keep popping up all over the place and uh, anyone who uh, would like to support us. We're getting a lot of really nice feedback from that, uh, that news, newsletter. Excuse me, um, Gary, have you spoken to Justin Wade? Yes, I've, I've, sent, uh, I've sent Justin some information about the whole, uh, the whole package. So, uh, Last time I saw him, he said he'd be interested in participating in something like that, so follow right. it up. Right, right, okay. Um, and uh, sorry, John, I've jumped over. Treasurer's report. Um, okay. Money. Money. Just say black or red. Yeah. <laughs> In the red. Um, okay. Total funds uh, are or were at the end of July forty three thousand nine hundred nine dollars and sixteen cents. Uh, there was a couple of uh, largish expenses during the month. The merchandise and um, we paid for the Bathurst houses accommodation for next year um, and uh, we have recovered some of that already uh, so we still still amounted to about uh, two thousand dollars of expenditure um, but we're recovering that so there'll be more to come in this month and next month that should have it all cleared up. Anyway, the bottom line is that we ended up uh, being in the negative by $215 over the month, so it's not all bad. Uh, at this time last year, we had, uh, sorry, at the beginning of this financial year, uh, which remember is the 1st of January, uh, we had um, some $3,500 less. So. Uh, but we've got some big expenses coming up, like the gala night and all that. So, okay, right. Um, any questions? Any money? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, editor's report. Uh, yeah, I just uh, glossed over that. But uh, the other interesting thing about the uh, e-newsletter, because it's online, we can get some great statistics. And Joel Solomon, who's uh, working on that with me, was showing us that you know we're being looked at in the United States, in Ireland, in France, in Germany, with that little newsletter. So, uh, and uh, you know, for, considering it's just a little closed group, we've had sort of hundreds and hundreds of views on that, which uh, uh, really heartens me to see that uh, we're we're getting it out there. We've also been uh, approached by Clubs Australia. The, uh, the umbrella group that we're under, uh, they're uh, pushing their website and they want content from all the clubs. So uh, fortunately, uh, I've been able to give them uh, links to all the videos that I've produced on the club over the last couple of years. And uh, I'm going to get them to link and put our newsletter on that uh, club, uh, Clubs Australia website. So we'll, uh, we'll get some good, good profile there. Will that six series newsletter go at the same we, we could very well do that if, if we want to. I haven't considered offering it up, but any of that sort of collateral, we can offer it up and see, uh, see what they want, which is great. Um, okay, uh, motorsport, Dennis, all right. Um, two things, firstly, um, I'll do both at the same time, ICC and motorsport. We had an ICC meeting last night. For those that don't know, ICC is the Interclub Challenge, where we've got, I think it's about nine clubs um, that are bonded together uh, to share motorsport events, and not just motorsport events, there's, a, there's another one that's just a straight road event that will appeal to people, I'll we'll mention in a minute, but for those that don't know. Um, and uh, each organisation does different types of things, and each one runs different things, and we just, means we can go along and participate in an event without actually having to do anything, just go and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, at that meeting last night, Larry and, Bro and uh, John were there. Um, there was an issue that came up 
and I thought I'd, I should mention it. Um, two particular people have continually made noises that they don't like the way we run our charity day as far as penalties for breaking out under the last six, etc. Um, and there's some argument and disparity going on about what information was given and what wasn't. I won't go into it. But basically the Interclub has decided to change the scoring system for that event. I have protested and lobbed a complaint against it and it was overridden last, overridden last night. Um, so they've basically changed the scoring in that event as far as interclub scoring goes and they've taken out any of those penalties that were put given to people for breaking out under the 106 limit, uh, which is the same we've always done. So it did change the results as far as interclub goes. We will not be changing the results. As far as I'm concerned, the results on the day were confirmed by Queensland Raceway and as far as I'm concerned, that's what they stay with. So people that got trophies and, and everything else, it stays there. Um, that issue will now be well and truly dealt with in the future with um, subsequent rule changes to things for the interclub. Because basically, you can't go and change the rules after an event, which was what was done. So I've had serious discussion with the sports club president, a motorsport person as well. So it, was, it wasn't good, but that, that was the outcome of it. Anyway, moving on from it, which we are, um, interclub wise, which is the first motorsport. Um, actually, it's not even a motorsport event, it's an event for everybody. Um, the MR2 Club, who's now new to, to the Interclub, they only joined last year, have taken up the challenge on, let me just check the date, uh, 20, 23rd of August, um, Saturday, Saturday, Saturday the 23rd of August, the day before our, our um, lunch, uh, what do you call it, lunch gathering. Um, <coughs> the MR2 Club has taken on organising a navigation run. So it's a straight out street drive, there's no track or anything in it, um, and it's a, um, uh, I forgot the word for it, um, scavenger type run. So you'll get all the questions and a thing, you'll get sheets of, t of info to tell you where to go if you get lost. Um, similar to with a couple of times that we've done in the past that one of our members, Alan Monaghan, organised. Right. So that's something that I'm, I'm hoping. So the whole of club is invited to that. That's that's yeah. a, a yeah, whole club in, invitation. It's up on the website. Uh, yeah, it's on the website now. We'll put more information in there when on I'm what website? It's on our website. I think. Yes, it is. I'm reading it off our website now. It's there. Twenty. <coughs> uh, okay. <coughs> no, it's not there. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Actually, I've got that date wrong. You got it. Yes, I've got that. That's September. Sorry, I got it wrong. Okay, the twenty fourth. Um, 25th of August is an in-club round um, of a motorsport round at Queensland Raceway. It's a Saturday afternoon uh, round at Queensland Raceway. Um, if anybody wants to go out and do a weekend, um, uh, it's a sprint event, but they're rejigging it so that it will actually be done like an in uh, regularity, but you don't nominate pre-nominate a time. So you go out and do a sprint like you would normally and then afterwards they'll work out average, what your average is and what your variation from the average is and the point score. So the, the bottom line is, it's a chance to go out to Queensland Raceway and have an afternoon of track fun. Um, you'll score some points for yourself and also some um, the top four people in each club score points for, their, for the club for the in the club round. Um, That's on the website. Can you clarify what date? Yeah, sorry. It's the, 20, it's the Saturday or the Sunday? It's the Saturday, the 20th. 5th of August, so it's the day before. The 24th of August. I think it's the 25th, I think it's on the 6th of August. Sunday the 25th. Oh, sorry, it is Sunday the 25th. I'm, I'm sorry. When there were so many events going around, I've, I've just got them mixed up. So right. it's Sunday so the 25th, words, which is the same day as our, our lunch Sunday. Day, yes. So um, it is the same day, I made mention to So them. stop promoting it. <laughs> <laughs> well, some may want to do one, some will want to do other. I mean, I made mention to at the, commi to the committee we that there, we <laughs> already have a day booked on that event, so well, I, have but I, 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 I know several people that won't want to come to lunch and will do that and the opposite. I'm, I'm not going to that, I'm going to the lunch, I've just registered it. What's the entry fee? It's 145, isn't it? Uh, it's 145 for an afternoon at Queensland Raceway. Uh, this day they have three out of the four, it's a standard street sprint day, but they book three out of the four sessions. Um, if they don't get the numbers, they'll drop that back to two. So there's plenty of space there, uh, but don't be late because they will make decisions soon, just how many they take. Right, so that's that one. 
keep going. All right. <coughs> My apologies for getting the dates mixed up. Um, our next own track event is Friday the 13th of September, and yes, it's Friday the 13th, <laughs> and most of you might have already seen the email I sent out, so it's a Friday the 13th, so I've said bring a black car, wear your black race suit, um, bring, your, bring your flying broom, or just have a black cat, but come out and have some fun at, at uh, Lakeside, which is our home track, for uh, one of our normal regular sprint days, which we are in coordination with. Oh, um, with the not coordination, but cooperation with the MX5 Club as well. So that's on the calendar. It's one hundred and ninety-five dollars for an entire day at Lakeside, and that's our own day. So we don't have anybody else. There. Now it goes on from there. Um, the one that I got mixed up with was the um, what's the date of the um, Gala night? The fourteenth. Fourteenth. On the Saturday. Well, the day after. The day after the, the gala mm. night on the 14th is the 15th of, of September, the Sunday, is the navigation run being run by the MR2 club. They've said that it won't be an early start, it'll be 9 o'clock at the earliest, maybe a bit later. It's around, it starts, um, it starts and finishes at the MG club over at Rockley. Um, they said it'll be about a two hour run uh, and then finish back. And I suggested to them last night that, well, maybe um, as the MG Club has a full kitchen and everything in there. Maybe we organise barbecue or, or, or some sort of lunch afterwards. And they said, oh, yeah, okay, great. So it'll be a good social day. It won't be just around Brisbane. It's going out into the country, and I believe they're going up into um, uh, the north and Sunshine Coast, the uh, hinterland area, uh, for a couple of hours and back. Oh, yes. that. So hopefully we get some good participation in that, because they're a good fun there. Uh, and the only other one is on Saturday, uh, Sunday the 13th of October, I booked an afternoon session at Queensland Raceway for a rec proper regularity event, the same way that we run it for the charity day. There won't be high penalties for going under the thing, but it'll be a normal, char normal regularity event. So for those that want to come out and experience a little bit of track action without having to think about driving too fast, it's about coming out and drive at your own pace at a nice, consistent level, and with a bit of luck, you might take a little trophy home at the end of the day. And that's $125 for an afternoon. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there was a question on the Facebook is if there's any uh, skid pan days coming up. I have uh, been trying to get a message across the last week to see if there is. I've asked today whether there would be one. The only one that fits into our calendar is that Saturday, the 20, uh, whatever, the day before the the, um, the lunch. Uh, it's the only day that fits in. But same again, they're different events that don't, one, one interests one, the other doesn't. Um, I'll be there for both. We'll, uh, we'll update you on the website and I Facebook have, pages. Yes, it's I from Bruce wait, Wilmont. I have to wait for the booking company <coughs> Thanks to get back to me. Got it. Okay. okay. Uh, just uh, one point on the interclub. Um, last night, uh, Larry went along with Dennis. Larry was presented with uh, yeah. an award for um, for winning the um, charity day. The charity day, 2018. Yeah, right. <laughs> You can see we've got <laughs> ourselves all sorted here with keeping things up to date. So but, they uh, have an award night in December, and whereas yeah. Um, if I was there, I would have received it on that night. Yeah. So then David Palmer was questioning, maybe I'm going to wait a year and a half to get mine, but if he goes yeah. on, on the Friday or someone goes on his behalf on the... Unfortunately, okay. I couldn't make it last year on the day I was... Yeah. I was oh, so uh, that, that was the reason. Anyway, anyway. Yeah, for, for your... Nice. Uh, for last I've year. got a nice trophy cabinet for my six series. There's some yes. nice ones up yes. there. Performers and okay. shows. Um, yeah, whatever. Thank you. Show. Um, uh, Alex, merchandise. Yep, Alex. Nothing new happening. I'm patching some things together, ideas, which we'll discuss at, at the committee level. Um, something that someone brought up earlier when new members join, we, if we can have a welcome pack. So I'm getting things together for that. I'll populate a, a few things. I've got a, a bag full of stuff which we can discuss. Effectively, a $25. Thing. It'll be everything from a chamois to 
All bits and pieces. And Alex does have some merchandise here with him tonight. Uh, I've got the things that are on the monthly newsletter, medal badges, old and new, there's the Clubs Australia, um, our, our badge, our show on patches, uh, stubby, it's a few stubby coolers. So if anyone wants what's on the newsletter, I have a selection here. Fantastic. And uh, Motorfest? That went, that went quite well. It was surprising me. It was a bit cold, I think, for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's a few prize there. Pockets open. We took over five, six hundred dollars for the day. Oh. So it's selling ten and fifteen dollar items. So mm. great. It was a bit of work, but surprising. Thank you. Okay. Much of nice correspondence. Leanne. Oh, Bruce says thanks. About <laughs> the skid pan day. Bruce, Bruce Wilmot. Oh, right, okay. Uh, there was the Dixie magazine from um, uh, BMW Car Club New Zealand. There was a Telstra invoice that's been passed on to the treasurer. And there was one returned uh, membership letter. So, JT, I imagine you gave that to. Harrison. You, oh, that's right. It was returned and you, you delivered it. You hand delivered it. So, that's been uh, well, that's, received too. Postman John. Postman mm. John. Yeah. But that's all. That was all. It's received. <laughs> okay. Um, the delegates report me. Uh, I've uh, touched on the uh, Club Australia website. Um, there has been uh, an incident uh, earlier in the month that uh, Club Queensland was uh, asked to please explain. It was an event through uh, in a small northern New South Wales town of uh, Grevillea where a number of BMWs were doing over 120 kilometres an hour on the wrong side of the road in a 50 zone through this town and uh, residents of the town contacted uh, uh, Club New South Wales then <coughs> contacted us. Uh, it was investigated and it wasn't uh, Club Queensland or Club Gold Coast. Um, but uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's all been uh, hopefully dealt with and the, the person who uh, reported it has been apologised to, uh, sort of. Um, there is also uh, associated with uh, that um, sensitive issue, we have been invited, Club Queensland has been invited to participate in an event uh, run by um, Brisbane BMW next weekend. It's called the Ultimate, uh, Ultimate Winter Drive. Um, Leanne and I went and uh, introduced ourselves and had a chat with uh, the new general manager, uh, Anthony Alfarci, um, earlier in the yeah, was it that earlier this week? Tuesday. It was Tuesday. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been a big week. Um, and uh, we discussed a number of issues, uh, including this um, the invitation that uh, Club Queensland has been given. The event um, is uh, being organised by Paul Young, um, who uh, some of you may know has had um, a history with uh, Club Queensland. And that uh, road incident was uh, uh, one of his groups again. I have spoken to Paul Young and had a rather disappointing conversation, I must admit. Um, and uh, I have discussed it at length with the committee about whether or not we uh, participate in this, uh, this event. And uh, I am of the opinion now that uh, we, uh, as a club, do not support the event. Uh, and uh, but that doesn't mean that if anyone individually wants to go on the event, you're more than welcome to support uh, Brisbane BMW and go along. But uh, on uh, a matter of principle of insurances, all sorts of uh, points. Uh, thank you, etiquette. Uh, it's uh, it saddens me to um, not be able to support the dealer. Uh, in an event like this, but I think um, we have to consider the club and its standing uh, and uh, the history, uh, which is, uh, I'm sad that uh, most of you hopefully don't know about it, it's just one of those things.
but uh, the decision that uh, I have made as president is that uh, I would not like to see BMW Club Queensland uh, support that event. So I'm sorry if that uh, goes against uh, anyone's uh, wishes, but as I said, um, uh, you're more than welcome uh, to take up the offer uh, from Brisbane BMW yeah, as, an as, as an individual and enjoy the day, I'm sure, and I hope that it will be a good day. They're trying very hard to make it a huge event with hundreds of cars and test driving vehicles and uh, lobby lunches and, and all sorts of things. I'm sure it will be a, probably a, be a nice day. We're not the only club that won't be attending. The Mini Club of Queensland has also declined to support that event. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. That is well, interesting. Um, Gary, have you advised Anthony yet, uh, BMW? Uh, I haven't. Okay, okay just um, but that's all I need. Um, when you do, yes. part of your arsenal and reasoning, I mean, by the way, I 100% um, back that decision because the only decision possible uh, and very difficult position that they put us in. But he should know that just before um, June, something like that, would have been, would have been April, uh, I had meetings with him as well mm -hmm. where I specifically raised our concerns and detailed our problems with <coughs> the young end club, the whole thing. Yes. You did refer to that one. Yep. And, and when they then went ahead with the first drive with Paul, I put in a extremely clearly worded uh, letter of complaint, mm -hmm. uh, which I think I CC'd you one at the time. Yes. Yep. And it's pretty obvious that we couldn't now just suddenly forget all that and just no. roll over and go. No. Um, I mean, we're, we're in a very strong stance of exactly what we've always said, mm -hmm. we're not going to do that. We, uh, we made it clear to him uh, at the time, and when we met with him, that uh, it was a, a major issue for us. Yeah, it's a big and issue. it was an issue for our community to decide mm -hmm. that I, I couldn't make that final decision until I had sat down with him and talked it through with him to get his, his point of view. Yeah. His attitude, I mean, and then and it's not just us. Gone, yeah. um, I know. Just Australia has the same stance. <laughs> well, no, they chose no, the no, white yesterday. No, 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 they don't. No. 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 <laughs> a... Why? I'll so, have a beer so with you and talk to you about it later. Oh, okay. God. Yes. There's yeah. been a review. Yeah. But the good part about what the the meeting was with, yeah. which re reiterated all the information you had already conveyed to him. Yeah. It was like, okay, that's them. You can still do this. Mm -hmm. So we, he, he was very open to us having the opportunity to do exactly the same as what is being yeah. offered, and that's what we were we were value adding yeah, yeah, and saying we can do this, but we can also do this and we can do that, and plus we can. And you wouldn't have the mini club boycotting it. No, <laughs> but we we just expanded on what the the ability that the club can do mm. as a club, yeah. as opposed to one person. Yeah. And also the fact that we don't charge. Yeah. We are we are more than happy to support very strongly. So it, it was a very good um, meeting to define that also. Mm -hmm. Just because we don't we're not going to that particular supporting that particular event mm -hmm. because of the particular the particulars in that, yeah. we have the ability to do, if not bigger and better, because we have more resources. Yeah. So you know, it is something that we can work on. It's a staggering situation that when you received the letter that I sent, that the decision was, hey, I know, let's pay the guy. Let's actually pay him to run our drives. Mm. Yeah. What the? Mm. Unbelievable. Yeah. But, that's, you won't but it's not from. surprising to those of us, is it? No, I mean, you know, it's yeah. totally no. expected. It came with a free yeah. case in the same Another interesting point is that uh, cams won't cover us. No. For that event, if we were to go, yeah, no, it's just an absolute mm. it's not that no way. But Gary, rather than take this out to the to the beer hall after, mm. can we have a clarification now on our Paul Young's group now officially recognised by they, Club they Australia? Are, they are not recognised by Club Australia. Okay. What the situation has been, as as I have been told, and there was much confusion over the last week or so about and more specifically about whether or not to support Brisbane BMW's event and uh, start off with it was no don't touch it because of the, the Paul Young involvement then uh, later in the week it's 
yes, support Brisbane BMW because they're your dealer and you should support them. Should, should support the dealer and don't do it just because uh, uh, Paul Young is, uh, is organising it. So, um, yeah, that's why there's been sort of a, a very, very much a late decision. Um, and, uh, you know, that's virtually down to today. So, well, I hope that tonight I can get a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's the right decision. Yes. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other general business before we call a close, our meeting to a close and then move on to our guest speaker? Okay. With that uh, meeting with Anthony, he offered basically, you tell me what you want and I'll look at you. So that's cars, events, um, more winter activity, uh, coming along and doing talks on cars and everything on the Yeah, very, very open to in keeping the very good um, association with our club and uh, <laughs> to continue and even more expand on it. Yeah. Um, you know, more, not with the media. Yes. There's opportunities with media. Yeah. We're producing all of the that he's more than happy to take on board too. So it was yeah, very good. It was very promising right up to the point where he started coming into club drops. So hopefully yeah. he can yeah. get past that and continue. Yeah. But as you know, dealers and their education with Clubs Australia has always been a grey area. Yeah. And if you seem to have to continue that cycle to go in and re-educate every time there's a change of anyone. So. <coughs> can, can I also suggest too that we keep good strong contact with Mark Miller at Westside? The, the <coughs> Thank you. I, I, he's I, very, I, very keen to do it. I haven't. And uh, that's sort of, you know, on the to-do list with, with the idea <coughs> was he was the most accommodating when when I spoke to him about before the charity day, right. up to the point, had basically had no idea who we were. Right, right. Yes. Once again, it gets back yeah. to yes, yeah, exactly. Okay. And that whole M membership, free membership thing is a complete <coughs> mess up. Uh, we've had a new member uh, <coughs> ring me and ask, you know, what's the deal with this membership thing? So it's supposed to be a, a deal through the dealer and the, the distributor and. Uh, just doesn't work. Anyway, uh, that's it for the general meeting. I'd uh, like to thank you all for coming. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> costings for the gala night? Sorry? Costings for gala night? Costings? No. I haven't got to that point. Okay. Still no, trying part. to finalise the... Uh, Ballpark? Oh, $300. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's better than that. We'll uh, we'll try and make sure that it's... Uh, it's quite Simple reasonable, line. and because we're in a, a nice, strong financial situation, the club will uh, be subsidising the event as well, uh, as we normally do. But um, you know, it's it's a night to celebrate. So you know, we don't want to mm, try and make money out of here. We don't want to sell millions of raffle tickets and that sort of stuff. So we'll just see what happens. Now, is Woodwick around? He just had that one. Good thing. <sighs> it is. Uh, this is uh, 15 minutes of fame. 15 minutes of fame. 10 or worse. 10? Well, first of all, let me just thank both Woody and uh, Nicola for um, welcoming us along. Um, as you probably all know, uh, Ludwig and uh, Nicola have been uh, running summer care for some time and uh, they have been uh, strong supporters of the club. And uh, one of the ideas is to bring the club and uh, have meetings at, uh, at places that support us so that we learn about them and um, uh, they get a moment to uh, tell us what's going on in their world. So, Thank you. Uh, welcome everyone. Um, I'm glad that as many people turn up to anybody. Uh, pleasant surprise, big group of people. Um, we've been involved with um, the BMW Club for um, you know, a few years now, I think it's coming up two or three years. Um, We've um, lacked in the past of time. We haven't really been there for the club to the extent where we should have been because due to building a business, building a framework, um, and things haven't really changed. Like it's actually grown 
bigger for us in the sense that we are time poor. My master technicians, they've got young kids, they've got young families, so there's never any time to do anything. Much to, to sort of chip in for track days or, or any events you've got in line. Um, so I do apologize for that. Um, the core for summer car care um, has sort of changed over the past four years since we're here in uh, Newmarket. Um, we have um, really focused and concentrated on the European market and <clears throat> we've recognized that for some time so that's why we've really strong committed time and effort and money into it. Um, and we've sort of established ourselves in probably the top 10 repair shops in Brisbane and Gold Coast. I think we're sort of on the very top end um, in capacity and capability to actually physically do that. Um, we've um, reduced the range of European cars from Alfa Romeo and all the rest of them down to uh, basically Volkswagen Group. Um, um, then we do uh, Land Rover Range Rover. And BMW is basically the cars which we really concentrate and focus on. Um, our focus is to drive business from the website <coughs> towards that um, in order to have a stable flow of group coming in. And we've really achieved that by um, getting a clientele which appreciate the, the work we do and the way we set our business up and the way we commit to to drive it forward in the sense that we, we invest a lot of money into uh, the staff like they are highly trained and qualified <coughs> courses virtually every month to two months where they go and do master tech trainings um, we, we fully equipped for that We've invested heavily again this year. We've spent about 30,000 for ADAS um, system alignments. So, this is for park assist, self park, the cameras for rear. Um, there's a massive amount of equipment required to do that, and it's extremely expensive. So, we're the first in Brisbane, uh, so we're the first company in all of the airships uh, in Queensland to have bought that. Mm -hmm. Um, and we'll, we'll be able to do like lay more calibrations. So if you have an accident and you have got um, a number of issues on it, uh, you require the equipment we purchased with just for on, um, and we're trying to obviously sell it on. <coughs> um, we also got plans to do a, a new equipment uh, bit later on this year for where you drive a car on a machine which will then tell you your tires, your suspension, it will give you a readout and a print of what situation the car is in without having to lift the car, it's basically just reading off the vehicle. It's about $15,000 for the platform and it gives you a complete overview of what your suspensions are, it's really, really in detail. So that's the next thing we'll do. Um, apart from that, uh, just to finish off on is the, um, the way we would like to continue um, it for, for our business as such is to be um, really on the top end of diagnostic work. So this is what we find currently is a lot of dealer work which the dealer couldn't do or fix or other repair shops which they couldn't fix. Um, they generally come on the tow truck <coughs> and then they stay here until we've got it now and fixed fix it. Um, so that's where we're at and that's where we're driving forward. Um, there'll be a lot of opportunity for that kind of work because it's very, very specific and it's highly technical. <coughs> um, give an example, one of my master techs, he will spend worldwide, he goes at night time, he goes home, he researches. He talks to all the top technicians in the world, in the UK, States, mm. Japan. Like he's, he's really, really involved in it. Mm. And he will, he will come across a fault on a car which no one else could do. 
and he will think about it, and he'll drive that car, he will have full scandals hanging off it, and he'll come in the following day, and he will know what it is. Mm. So that's how complicated it is gone. Yes. Um, so we all got something to look forward to, and you need a big wallet. <laughs> You're also yeah. saying the investment you've given your guys uh, in um, uh, yeah. electric and hybrid. Yeah, so they are they're now fully qualified to be um, on hard power, so which is fully electric cars or hybrid, which you have to have the certification to actually work on it, because otherwise you get killed. <laughs> um, so we've got that, and we plan to go into that area uh, probably in the next 12, 6 or 12 months. It takes a lot of time to to bring um, the focus on it and we drive the traffic from the website and different different forms um, towards the business. And we've also I've grown a bit like we, we we've got six hundred plus fifteen square meters and we've upgraded it, we've totally upgraded it in, in, in the three years. So we'll probably have to expand at some point and set another station, mm -hmm. second building up for mm -hmm. Specific work, so we may break away with the ATIS, um, the Viva Linus, the Tyson suspension work. Are you, are you mainly concentrating on the modern cars or um, are you doing the, classic work as well? No, we don't. Like, classic work is not really something we can do because we can't facilitate it. Yeah. If we have the room, um, yeah, I mean, I, my background is I've done quite a lot of car installations <laughs> in, my, in my early days, yeah. but I don't have the time. Mm -hmm. I don't have the space. This is all the part the car park we get is probably um, it's all generally late models from two thousand and ten upwards to virtually brand new. We get um, a year old land Rover. we get beautiful BMWs, we get we get really, really nice cars, we get jails, we get we get a lot of nice cars for you. Um, and there's just no room that you've got. We, we don't have the room for it. Yeah. I wish I had, but yeah, I was no, just you know, trying to differentiate where you, yeah. where you cut off was more than we, we generally got mid to high range. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we've mm -hmm. um, sort of achieved with what the way we've set the business up. Um, and we utilize the failure of the of the dealership because they can't service the car park which has been sold. Mm -hmm. uh, clients are not willing to go and wait three, four weeks till they get a car booked in. Well, a car's broken and then the car's basically dead, they can't do anything with mm -hmm. it. So that's where we get a lot of um, clientele coming in. Yeah. Um, and we will service them and try to look after them and keep them retained. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are. There's a little company. Um, as I said, I'm glad to have you all here. And I hope you enjoy. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you. Hi, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please uh, don't hesitate to uh, contact Woody or Nicola, but uh, Nicola's off for three weeks in Spain, so... Uh, oh, yeah. you painted too much! Yeah! <laughs> anyway, but, uh, yeah, so don't hesitate to give him a shout, uh, even guys with older cars, I'm sure that uh, he won't say no, he'll point, it, point us in the right direction, he can't look after us, but... Uh, yeah. We'll have a, a couple of beers and uh, a, a sausage sizzle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.